In this video we're going to look at the PV diagram and the differences between the ideal uh, petrol and diesel um, um, cycles. So I've gone to uh, Google here, typed in PV diagram, images, and we have a whole array of different pictures here. Click on that one there. That shows, that's quite a good one actually if you take it from a real engine. That shows the four different cycles here. We've got pressure up this left hand side. Volume on the on the um, the bottom. This is in cubic inches by the look of it. Cubic inches displacement American. Uh, so we have the intake stroke here, the compression stroke there, expansion stroke there, and this is the exhaust stroke there. Four strokes. That's what else we've got over here. This diagram um, is the. Uh, is just the um, two strokes from the four stroke cycle but they've, they've, they've put numbers one two three and four on here just to, just to make it confusing the bits that are missing from here are the uh, the intake which would start there and go right and then the um, the exhaust is missing uh, so this is just the compression stroke which is from here to here including that bit and the expansion stroke is from here to here and includes that bit so this is just two strokes of the four stroke cycle. Um, what else have we got? Go back to the pictures, have a quick look. Um, let's go down. Lots of different examples of different thermodynamic cycles here. Um, this is quite a good one. It shows, uh, again, it's just showing two strokes. Where's that? Where's that picture gone? Here we are. Um, so that's the compression stroke. This is where the heat is being released by the fuel being burnt uh, in the expansion stroke. And that's the expansion stroke. So at the top, that to there is the expansion stroke. And this is also, that's the exhaust which happens instantaneously. Again, there are two other bits missing, the intake stroke and the exhaust stroke. So, um, Adiabatic processes here. Uh, adiabatic means um, that there is no um, input or loss of energy during that part. So, there's, so it's like a sealed container. It either happens too quickly for any heat transfer to take place, or the um, or the uh, thermal conductivity is uh, zero between the gas and the exterior. And the only heat going in is at the top here through combustion or through the exhaust. Um, okay, let's have a go at now building uh, a PV diagram, and we're going to look at what the differences are between the diesel and the and the auto cycle. Um, so let's have a quick look. So I'll start with this diagram. Let's put on a diesel cycle in I don't know this colour here. That's fine. And we start with uh, stroke one, the intake stroke. So it sucks, squeeze, bang, blow, or intake compression power exhaust. Um, so we start with the intake stroke. So we start about here. So that's the starting position. So the volume is at a minimum, and the pressure is atmospheric. So sucking in. The compression stroke then is this one. Um, and then the power stroke is so that's the end of the compression stroke. Then the power stroke we have burning here whilst it's expanding comes down to here, and then the exhaust valve opens, so that's the end of the power stroke, and then the exhaust valve opens bang along the exhaust pipe and then we end up back at the beginning. So that's the diesel. No, the the uh, interesting thing to note here is that the top of it is flat. Obviously this is the maximum pressure limit for the engine. So we don't want the pressure to go above there otherwise we place too much mechanical load on it. Uh, this is the minimum volume. 
the same as that. This is the maximum volume. The ratio between these two, that's V1 and V2. The ratio is called the compression ratio. So the compression ratio equals V2 over V1. Okay, uh, anything else to note on here? Yep, um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's do the petrol stroke, petrol cycle now, or the auto cycle. Um, again, this bit is the same. We start here intake. So we intake um, a fuel air mixture this time, then we compress the fuel air mixture not so much compression this time in a petrol engine so we end up about here and then there's a, a spark that happens which gives you a vertical line up to the same pressure point maximum pressure point and then the expansion happens along here and then that's the end of the expansion stroke and then the uh, exhaust stroke takes us back to the beginning uh, now in the petrol engine, V1 um, uh, would not be quite as low as V1 in a diesel engine. So actually I've drawn this wrong. The V1 and the petrol should be a bit to the right hand side of that line. Um, but I'm sure you can imagine that. And the reason is we don't want to have too much compression in a petrol engine. Because uh, when it starts firing at this point here, we want that pressure to be a bit lower than that black line so when the spark ignites the fuel the pressure increase doesn't blow the cylinder head off um, so that's the so the petrol is the red one the um, the diesel is the blue one now uh, how do we know how much power is being produced by the engine here and why are diesels more efficient? Well, it's all shown in this diagram. Uh, the shaded area, um, the shaded area here, is the amount of energy that's being released, the mechanical energy that's being released by the uh, that cycle. So the shaded area here, I can, I've made, I can't fill it in because it won't work. Um, so the, sh the, f the area inside that blue loop is the amount of power that's coming from the diesel engine and the area inside the, uh, you guessed it, the red loop is the amount of power you'd get from a equivalent petrol engine. So you can see that just by eye that the area of that blue loop is actually bigger than the area of the red loop which is basically why a diesel engine is um, more efficient than a petrol engine okay